Oh, wow. Gorgeous. I'm lost for words. Coming here to this home, you get a sense of who Betsy Bloomingdale was, and that's to say, fabulous in every respect. She reigned supreme within Southern California. Incredible entertainer, icon of style. There's this perfection that surrounded her in every aspect of the way in which she lived. And what's wonderful coming here is sort of seeing it come to life. She married the heir to the Bloomingdale fortune, Alfred Bloomingdale, and set up home here in Holmby Hills in this amazing house that she had decorated by Billy Haynes. Every detail, every aspect of this interior speaks to that wonderful moment in time where style, grace and elegance really meant something. Everyone who was anyone in Los Angeles society at that time congregated here and around Betsy Bloomingdale. And I think you get a sense of that as you walk around these rooms, you know, the stories that could be told if these walls could talk. Well, this is, this is it. This is the, the most famous interior in the house. The one with those amazing glamour shots of the late 50s, early 60s when they were entertaining. There's that fantastic image, isn't there, of the, the sort of oysters out here with the champagne and you, know, you can always hear the sort of Duke Ellington records. She would plan meticulously the dinners. She would have the Reagans, the Kitchen Cabinet, the Annenbergs, the Deutsches, as well as Hollywood names would also congregate here. She loved to get things right. And I think a great demonstration of that are the dinner party books that she kept. This is a dinner for April the 8th, 1978. We know where everyone was sitting, and that included the Reagans, the Jimmy Stewarts, Jules Stein. We know what they had for dinner. They had her famous hors d'oeuvre, which was peanut butter and bacon, mushroom soup, and then fillet of beef. You can almost feel the conversation, and what's amazing is that it was here. It was in this room. Fantastic, original Billy Haynes studio frames. When you start looking at the things that were made for the house by Billy Haynes, you really understand what it was to have a master decorator work on the place. The lightness of the atmosphere, the way in which you move in the space, you feel great. Then you get to stop and think, oh my God, Joan Crawford used to party at this house. Cary Grant, you know, did Nancy Reagan sit on this chair? Did Sinatra sit on that chair? So then you start to understand what an exciting life that chair has actually led. I think Haynes, when he designed furniture, he had parties in mind. When women sat in beautiful gowns, they could flare their dresses out, and they always looked beautiful if they were on a piece of Haynes furniture. Haynes didn't sign his work because he said if you were in a Haynes house, you knew it, and you didn't need his signature because his signature was his work. Oh, wow, this is fabulous. Look at her gowns. This is Dior. And then look at this, she sort of actually itemized everywhere she wore it. So Palm Springs, New Year's 1986, MoMA, New York City, Spring 1988, it's incredible, everywhere she ever wore it. Mrs. Bloomingdale's spirit imbues the place. She liked to laugh, she liked to enjoy herself, she loved her friends. It's celebrating life, and that's what it's really all about here. It's celebrating life. I think one of the most poignant threads that runs through a collection like this is it is a sort of closing window on an incredible moment in time. Reflecting on her life, Mrs. Bloomingdale said, it was a special world, a special time, uh, and that she was lucky to be a part of it. What we have here is an extraordinary opportunity to look back through a window on her world and what a spectacular world it was.